XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. There's the M and the L in XML. Where's the X? Well, it's right there in Extensible. And it's a language that's shareable between different programs. For example, we know Excel. That's what I'm training you on. That Microsoft created a spreadsheet program there. And if you have another company that creates a spreadsheet program and you try to share data back and forth between the two, it's not going to work. Usually you'll get a bunch of characters and codes when you try to open up one of their files or they try to open up one of Microsoft's files here in Excel workbook. So instead, we can export the data that we have within our spreadsheet, or they can do it with theirs, into the extensible markup language, which strips it of all formatting and coding and just gives us the raw data. And basically any program can open up and look at the raw data. Now in conjunction, when we export, or if you export your uh, worksheet into an XML file, just the raw data, you also need to tag that data with a set of rules. That's where we get into the second file. They go hand in hand, the XML file and the XML schemas file, which has a .xsd extension. We'll talk about extensions in just a second. And again, it's a set of rules that tells what kind of data or fields are and can be used in an XML file. Let me go to a workbook here, my exercises folder. Let's do DF payroll, double click and open that up, maximize it. I've got all this data here, right? And I've got them listed by first name, last name, and so on. So when I go ahead and save this as an XML file, it'll strip it down and it'll tag each one of these uh, fields here, like Max is going to be the first name, Klingner is going to be the last name, it's tagging it. So when it tags it, that's the XML file. What the schema does is it says, okay, I understand you've got all this data here that's been tagged. The schema defines the fields that are available that we can go ahead and pull this data into. And what fields are available? Well, in the schema file, it'll say you have first name, you have last name, because without those fields, already there set up with a set of rules to say that we do have the first field, we do have the last name field and the social security number, then you just have a bunch of tag names. Now you would think probably that, hey, if it's already tagged, why do we need a second file? Well, it doesn't work that way. Again, we're trying to deal with raw data. One file, the XML file, contains just the uh, data. The second uh, file contains the fields that define, or the set of rules, that the data is tagged to. So max, we have it in the XML file, is the first name. The schema file will say it's tagged to the field first name. Okay, Keep that in mind. Let's go to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. So here I've got an example, an XML file, that contains just my customer's information. Let me come down here and control click the schema. This contains a set of rules or the fields that are available or allowed. So the customer information needs to be tagged with the field names. And over here it'll actually have the fields. When you marry the two, it'll import the data into those fields, okay? So let me go ahead and open both these up in notepads so you can see what they look like. Because when you double click on it, well, double click on this one, it opens up in uh, the web browser. You can see it there, and I'll go ahead and close out. When you double click on this one, it goes, um, I don't know the program to open this up in. So I'll go ahead and click cancel and open them both up in notepad. Click on the start button. You can type in notepad, or mine's right here. I'll click on it to open it up. And it's only looking for text documents, so I need to change that and say look for all files. So I want the customers, XML, double click, opens that up, and of course file to notepad again, so I can bring up a new window, file to open. And let me open up, well, change this to all files so I can see everything within that folder. So we got customers XML, now we need the schemas, double click on that, and let me go ahead and uh, pull this up to the top and shrink it up just a bit and then bring this down to the bottom here so we can try to see both of them at the same time. So the one at the top is the XML file. It contains all the uh, data for my employee database, or some of it here. And you'll see we've got first name, last name together, and then we have the street address city. And you'll notice that outside of the uh, data, we've got what are called tags. We have a name and a name. These are the opening and closing tags that define everything in between those tags. So when I have the name here, it begins, anything coming after that is going to be name, and then the forward slash with the same name as the first name means that it's closing that tag. So street's the open tag, forward slash street is the closing tag. Anything in between that is data for the street field. So these are all tagged for these fields, and then down below, in the schema file, it says these are the fields that we want to have set up and available to pull the data into that are tagged to those fields. So the fields that's going to be available are the name, street, city, state, and zip. There we go. We got them tagged here to go into the name field, the street field, the city, and so on. Okay. 
So you're just looking at raw data here. And that way it doesn't come with a bunch of uh, gobbledygook formatting or extra coding. Let me go ahead and close out of both of those. And let's open up a new blank workbook. I'm going to come down here. Since I have Windows 7, if I right click on the icon down below, I can click on and open up the new Excel workbook here. Now the very first thing I want to do is I want to set up the fields or the tags. That's going to be the XSD schema file. Because once I have that set up and the fields locked in place, then I can go ahead and pull the XML file in and say, okay, we've got the fields available. Now let's go ahead and pull the data that are tagged and go right to those fields. To do that, I need the uh, developer tab up here on the ribbon. If you don't see it, then come over here, click on the file tab. You can go down to options and then go to customize the ribbon. And be sure to uh, check the box developer here and then click OK. Go to the developer tab because here we've got the XML group and let's go ahead and click on source. Opens up the task pane over to the right. Let's go ahead and map this by clicking on XML maps and the XML maps is basically saying where's your schema file, your .xsd file. Now I told you about extensions and the .xsd, the .xml, or the .xlsx they're all extensions of the names of the files that you give it. It tells the operating system what program is going to open up that file. I mean, you've got your names that make sense to you, but the Windows operating system needs to have its own extended name or extension to identify what program is supposed to open up that file. So when I talk about XML extensions or XSD, and you want to learn more about it, how to be able to view those extensions, then watch my uh, Windows 7 training video, okay? Let's go ahead and click on Add. Then it says, okay, where's your uh, schema file? Well, it's on the desktop in my exercises folder. And there it is. Double click on schema. Let me go ahead and click and drag so I can open up these uh, column labels. So there's the name of it, customer info. And if you made a mistake, you can always select it and click delete, but I didn't. So I'll go ahead and keep it. And then go ahead and click OK. Automatically over here, it's got the name of the fields that schema contains, which is the ID, name, street, city, and state, and zip. Now all I need to do to map this is just to say, OK, where in my worksheet do I want these fields to sit so later on I can pull in my data and put them into those fields. So all I have to do is come over here, is click and drag, and just dump it right into cell A1. That's one way. Or you can right click on the field and say you want to map the element. And it says, OK, what cell do you want to put it in? We can click on the collapsible dialog box, select another uh, cell, hit enter, and click OK. What I don't recommend is that you click and drag and just dump them all over the place because if you don't keep them together contiguously, in other words, one right next to the other, well, first of all, notice that when I drop the fields in there, we've got some formatting and also you see those little tick marks. If you watch my training video on tables, it's actually creating these tables. And that little tick mark here says everything above and to the left of that that's formatted is a table. So I've got one table, two tables, three tables. I mean, that's annoying to be able to organize, and if I wanted to select one of them and change the color, it updates it there, but then I have to select all the other tags that I dumped all over the spreadsheet. Also, if I want to be able to export this later on, after I import all the information, and let's say I make some updates, we can't have any gaps, and they all have to be together, otherwise we're going to get some uh, erroneous uh, things happening or errors. So, we want to do this over again. You don't want to go ahead and select this and hover over the border of it and click and drag and put it right next to it because again it doesn't combine it together. I still have those little tick marks, two of them, that says that's a table and that's a table. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select it. Click on the border, hit the delete key. Let's go ahead and select that range and delete them and then we'll start over again. In fact, if I'm going to go ahead and dump all of the fields into the worksheet here and I want them contiguously from left to right, Go ahead and hold down the control key and click and select all the additional ones here. Once they're all selected, go ahead and click on any one of the highlighted ones and come over here and dump it right in cell A1. Click off in a blank area. You can see the tick marks right here, so everything above it and to the left of it, it's all one continuous table. It's all in one table, all these fields. Now that we have it mapped using the XSD file that contains only the fields, so the fields are set up, now we can go ahead and import the data that was tagged with those field names, like name to name, street to street. Come back up here, click on the Developer tab. Let's go ahead and click on Import. There's the XML file. Double click. Boom, that's it. So we set up the fields, we import, pulls in the data into the corresponding field. Now if I come down here and I want to add more information, just go ahead and start typing in. Notice at the moment I type it in and hit the Tab key, 
the table expands to include that row. And then hit the Tab key, gives me another row, so I can continue to add more and more information. And that's it. So I'm able to go ahead and pull information that somebody else created in another uh, spreadsheet program, as long as they export it into an XML file and an XSD file that's complementary to the data, so we can set up the fields before we pull in the data, then we're good to go. As far as uh, creating those XSD files and saving them there, we'll let the IT people do it. We're on the front end, so we'll keep it simple. And then finally, when I made my updates here, and I want to go ahead and export this back out as an XML file, it's really simple. Just come up here in the XML group, of course, on the Developer tab. Go to Export. My spiffy go happy lucky new customer file number two. Click on Export. That's it. Well, let's see if it worked. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here and not save it. And there it is, my spiffy new customer file. Double click on that. I don't have to open it up in uh, Notepad because it, well, it'll open up in the uh, web browser. And it's got the three that I had originally, and then it added the last entry there, Don Juan. So it works fantastic. And then, of course, I can go ahead and forward this on to somebody else, but make sure that not only do I include the XML file, but actually the set of rules, uh, the fields that will be set up before the file can be imported with all the data, the uh, schema here, or .xsd file. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.